Okay, I am going to walk you through how I made this image with some uh, simple displacements and the process I followed. So let's open a new document in Cinema 4D. I'm going to create a plane. Let's bump that plane up to 4,000 um, centimeters in width and height. I'm going to reposition my camera. I'm going to open Octane. I'm going to grab these bars here till it highlights and drag it into that window. I'm going to make my dimensions 1080 by 1350. Change this to Octane Render. And those are the, I'm going to refresh my window here. I'm going to squeeze this up so I can see the top and bottom of my camera. Um, those are the dimensions of a sort of portrait Instagram mode. Let me drop and add an object, Octane Camera. I'm going to select it there so it's selected. I'm going to change this to 50 mil lens. I'm going to zero out these guys. I'm going to put this to about minus eight, so we're looking down a little bit. I'm going to zero out this one, so we're right in the middle of the X axis. Looking good to me. I'm going to drag this up a bit, so the horizon's almost in the middle. Maybe I should go a bit more. Um, and let's add some. Let's add a sphere. Let's add a cylinder and a cube. I just want to show you, you can make uh, what I'm doing with different shapes. I'm going to middle click to show me all my windows. Let's grab all of those, press T and scale them down about 60%. Press E to move, and I select my cylinder, drag it over. Sorry, my sphere, select my cylinder, move it in the front. Maybe my cube can go at the back there. I'm going to hold down, was it control, and drag my cube over there. Um, and let's have another cylinder as well. I'm going to hold down control and then drag it over there. So on each of these, I'm going. To, I want it to have a rock-looking shape. So let me get a displacer. I'm going to drop it under the sphere to begin with. Let's set the shader to noise. Click on that noise. Let's put it global scale to a thousand. And so we can have that have an effect. Let's put this segments to 50. So now we can see that that's having a you know an effect. It's changing the shape to like a, a simplified rock shape. And I think I'm happy with that. Um, yeah, I could up the segments, the height, sorry, to two. So it, you know, changes that shape a bit more. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just copy that to every shape in my um, scene. So it's changing them all. I'm going to change the display to lines so I can see how many segments we're dealing with. So what I want to do is bump those segments up. Let me make it say 35 and 35, maybe 50. And on the um, cylinders, I want to increase the caps and the radius. So see how it's changing that shape to be a bit more smooth. I can increase those segments. So I'm just getting some, I'm going to do the same to the other cylinder first while I'm here. Segments up, smooth it out. Maybe I make this one 35, 35. All good and with the cube I want to give that more segments too. I'm going to turn on the fillet first 
smooth that out. Let's add some more segments. That'll do. Maybe five. And let's add some more segments. Uh, let's go 25, 25, 25. And let's reproduce that for the last cube. Um, let's say maybe 20 for this one, 20 segments in each. And fill it the edges. Maybe much more smoother for this one. So you can see the polygons are increasing there. Cool, so we have a group of, I'm going to do option G to group those into one group that I'm going to call rocks. Not done with them, but that is a basic setup of what I'm looking at. Now let us chuck in a sun, an octane sun, so octane objects, lights, daylight sun. Uh, this sky turbidity is, um, well let me move if, so you can see it better. I'm going to change the direction, uh, angle this down. Um, let me angle it say minus 60, so it's quite angled and I'm going to put it right to the side and no, the other side, so minus 90 so we can see the effect it's having. Now go to the daylight tag. So this is sort of like how much diffusion or fog or um, stuff the, the sky, the, the sun has to bounce around before it gets to us and we see it. Um, so I'm gonna chuck that on eight. And you see how it's diffused the sky much more. I'm gonna put the ground angle to eight as well. So I'm just get rid of it and I know I'm going to end up putting some fog in my scene so I'm going to replicate that sky by not having blue in it by having white because it's going to be a white misty fog so I've just taken out all the sort of sky looking but I've got a nice uh, diffused light coming that I can just work with there so I can see what my scene is doing let me save this before I go any further I'm just going to call it Five rocks, OB, O1B. Um, okay, so now what I'm going to do is I've got a basic scene happening. I'm going to texture this, and the way I'm going to get my texture is I'm going to use um, just found things on the internet. So I just searched rock textures people might not think of. I saw this one first. It's free high resolution rock textures great that's what I want that ended me up at here and I found this rock texture I just um, I copied this to the desktop a new folder in my desktop I copied it there and then I have this free PC software called materialize so go to here and this link and download that and so I'm in materialize now so let me close that window down. Uh, so this is a basic software for making some materials. So let me press the O here for the diffuse map, go to my desktop, double click, find that rock texture, select that rock texture. Uh, right mouse, you can um, move that around so you can see what it looks like. I'm going to edit that diffuse map. You see the reveal slider shows you the original and what you're changing it to. So this is my diffuse map and I'm going to try and just give it a flat color of gray or whitish gray and get rid of these dark elements. So I'm going to go to shadow mask power, remove shadow. See how it's just now getting rid of uh, those dark areas. Um, and final bias, I'm gonna move that bias towards the light area so it's not so gray. And that's all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set that as diffuse. I'm gonna create my height map. And I'm going to click original diffuse. So I'm using the original um, image that we brought in. And I'm gonna press, this is the default, I'm gonna use details. I want a few more details in there. And set that as the height map. So now if we go show full material, 
um, we can see we've got some height and edges to that happening from our texture. So if I go save project, desktop, that new folder, call it uh, Rocky, whatever, um, select that. So then I go uh, to my folder on the desktop and it's saved that file plus all the files it's it's chucked out, the uh, Rocky Diffuse and the height. And I just went and I grabbed all of that, I copied that, and where did I put it? I put it in a texture folder into my Cinema 4D folder and I had all those textures there. And that is that. So I'm going to close that down now. So I've got that. So let me create some textures. Material, glossy, double click that so I can see node editor. Gonna drop in that image texture, connect it to the diffuse. Go and find, I mean, yeah, so the text thing. Um, so I want the diffuse version of that. And I'm gonna drag that on just top of all the rocks. So you can see now we've got that color to the rocks. Another image texture. I'm going to grab the height map now. So I've got that. I need a displacement. I'm going to connect that to the displacement and to the texture. So now they, you can see that they bumped out and it gave them a height. I am going to up the resolution to about 4K. And I just want the height. I'll just leave it at 10 for the time being. And that's good. I'm not going to be too fussy with it. So now I am just going to re uh, adjust my rocks so they look a little bit more rocky. So I'm going to press R for rotate. I'm going to grab, make sure it turns white, grab that angle. So I'm just going to change it to that angle. Let me get the other cylinder, do something similar with the rotation. Maybe I'll rotate it around this axis as well. Something like that. Um, middle mouse to go above it again. I'm going to get my cube. I'm going to right click, zoom in. Um, I'm going to squeeze it in that direction. You can see that this is going to adjust the um, the fillet. Just drag that. Um, right click to zoom in. I'm going to drag it down there. So you can just do all this on the fly. Ah, uh, the rotate. Maybe this dude is a bit more. There, I'm going to press W for the turn that flicks the global um, position rotation scales around. I'm just basing my rock. Um, and what I'm going to do is do the um, zoom out again. Where's this last guy? There he is. Do something similar to him. Squeeze him. Rotate. Um, maybe I'll smooth this one right out. It's a bit more angled. Now I'm going to position these two guys much further back. Select him and just press that to um, fake a perspective so that they're a bit further back. Um, this one. That will do. I might rotate this one a little bit more. And you just just spend some time playing around with how you want your rocks to look or what kind of rocks. Uh, and that's it. That's all I'm going to do. I'm going to create a new texture for the plane. Let's go materials, glossy again, double click. Uh, I want the color to be sort of like a gray. Actually, let me cancel that. 
let me do the texture first so I want a noise where's my noise here is my noise there's my noise I'm going to put this into the displacement the displacement goes into there but to get my noise to work with the displacement I have to bake it so I need a baking texture so I'm going to go noise texture baking texture I'm going to throw that onto the plane um, just so I can see it I'm going to I'm going to make the height really small but I'm going to put the level of detail to 4k um, so I can see it's working it's very subtle I just bumped up the height to 2k just so I could see something happening I'm going to just temporarily drop down this sun uh, whoops the angle is really high I'll just leave that <laughs> um, so I'm going to put these octaves up so I'm just going to simulate um, a bit of a, a water texture but I just want it to be really subtle so you see you see ripples in the in the water um, and some reflection that's all I'm after that's all I want to happen um, I'm gonna put this resolution up to 4000 so it matches my displacement so it's quite high now so I'm going to take the height right down mm, something like maybe two centimeters it's you know it's, so it's it's very very subtle and that's all I am after sweet now I am want to add the fog now yes I do um, so let me just click this F for focus I'm going to focus on this first rock you see how the camera then pivots to there turn that off I've been on def um, I've been on direct lighting which is nice and quick but I'm going to change it to path tracing now let's make these samples just 5 12 and 4 turn that off save that and now I'm going to just I want to control the light a bit so we've got this sky happening I know when I put the fog in it's going to make everything more diffuse um, and bounce around and not give me any shadows but just for the time being I want to create uh, a bit more shadow so I'm going to put a big blocking uh, cube behind my camera so no light is coming from that angle um, so let me so you can see it I'm going to do a diffuse material double click I'm just going to turn off the diffuse so it's a big black nothingness so it's not reflecting anything let me zoom out from here I'll make this quite wide maybe I'll make it the same width as the plane and make it quite high drag it back behind the camera and now you can see it's just blocking any light coming from that angle so before it was quite light on all directions and now I'm just introducing a bit more dark areas in the front of the camera and press E drag that up so it starts the plane there okay um, and let's add some fog objects octane fog volume here's my volume generate let's put this up to 200 to begin with it disappears um, let's change this color to white and this one to white I just want a white fog enveloping the whole scene change the density to well I want it to be enveloping the whole scene so let me drag it out drag it back and drag it up 
I'm going to have it starting about there. I need to drag it up a bit more so so it's obviously covering my whole scene now. I'm going to keep dragging until I see it. You can see the bottom of the line there. And I'll reposition it in a second. Um, so let's change the density to, what do I want, point two five. There you go, it's having a nice effect. So let me drag that back now, just so it's in the camera range. Now if you go to Edge Feather, I'm going to bump that up to 1. That will feather off the edges, like it says on the tin. There we go. Uh, cool. Save that so I don't lose it. So now I am going to get a figure in there. To get a figure, I went to Mixamo. I found this character on there called Megan, I think. Megan or Megan. I just typed in float, but then I found this one called Female Dynamic Pose. So sign up to Mixamo if you don't have an account. It, I think it's free. Uh, then I downloaded her. I put that in a folder uh, just called FBX and she she looks like that FBX file so let me go find that now so merge project FBX pose open ok uh, no to having takes so there she is I'm gonna grab all of her parts um, option G before I go any further as well I'm going to grab the two materials that she came in with I am going to convert materials to octane friendly materials take a second done um, and then I'm with the group I did I'm gonna call her um, person and I'm going to zoom in I'm going to drag her so she's somewhat centered it's E to move I'm going to drag her all the way up there R to rotate and rotate on that axis there so something like that I rotate her around a bit more so I can see the top of her Just play with that rotation to get something that you're happy with. I'm good with that. Um, might bring her up a little bit higher. So now that I've rotated her, her axis is off. Press W for a world axis that I can. I know I'm just dragging her up in the center. Sweet. Um, so I want to change this color of the water. Let's imagine it's like a pink lake or something, but not too pink, just subtle. So I'm going to go back into my texture. Double click if it wants to work. I'm going to save it. There we go. Um, let's say I think I've got some values minus 13 oh. I just want a pink so let's say 13 18 ish not so bright maybe like 80 it's a really subtle pink I 
and I actually want these rocks darker so another a quick way of doing that is it might um, go to my image texture and I just change the gamma just drag that up till we get something darker looking yeah so you just play around with the um, you know the positions of your rocks and how you want them until you get something you like um, these rocks are looking a little bit too similar for me so I'm just going to select one and then maybe um, just change the direction of it or something Um, and so what I'm doing is I'm just creating, uh, in my head, I've got this idea that she's the focus. And so I'm moving rocks so they subconsciously point towards her uh, from the angle. So this one's pointing up there, this one's pointing towards her. I can maybe do something with this one. I don't want it to be too obvious. This one's pointing towards her so just creating some compositional interest little tricks let me okay and then save that um, before and that's basically it that's that's the basis of it you can mess around with your colors and whatever but then before I render out I usually just come in and I make this voxel size a lot smaller so that's the sort of these blocky things you can see which the 3d pixels which make up the fog and I bring down the step size which is the amount of sort of grain that will go into all the the amount of stepping in between each voxel so I put that down to maybe 0.4 and maybe just change the density so I want it a bit more dense and I just just eyeball it but it's you know there's some values for you you can play around with and then yep happy with that maybe I'll just move it up slightly maybe I want to bring a bit more of that ripple in so I'm just making the final tweaks here before I uh, render it out displacement and as you move that fog uh, to sort of render quality I can feel my machine slowing down already as well um, come on so let's just say three I'm just going to turn off that volume just for a second so I can get my computer back uh, and then also I can see a couple of hot pixels so there is a hot pixel setting yeah here it is I just move that down so it just gets rid of those white dots um, and that is it I am just about to render um, I just want to make the gamma of this a bit higher. I want these rocks much darker. I just really want a minimal scene, just shades of dark and light. Bam, fog back on. She is ascending to the sky. Let's render. And 
any time after I finish rendering, I always bring it into Photoshop and I adjust some levels and curves and the color uh, adjustment to finish it off. That's it. Hope uh, you um, got some value out of that, guys. I hope you learned something, and I will see you next time. Thanks. Bye.